Hello and thank you so much for joining me for some Saturday Night Crafting. If you're new, welcome to my channel. On my channel, I love to do videos where I show you techniques. So in every video I post on a Saturday night, you will see a technique that you can learn and you can practice and play with. Tonight we're playing with metallic paints and we are going to make some fun cards. And I'm going to share with you how you can go about doing that and the products I've used in order to create these fun handmade homemade cards. Now I've been seeing lots of paintings around of sort of like random shaped kind of paintings and I really wanted to have a go and I had these watercolors in my stash that I've been meaning to use for ages. Now this wonderful woman named Melina who is on Etsy um, sells all these handmade metallic paints and they are so stunning. So I ordered these two here on her website, pinged her an email saying I can't wait to use them. I found her through Marta on YouTube and I thought I have to try some of these paints because look how stunning they are. Um, and she actually said, could I send you a few to try out as well if you want to use them in your videos? So I said, yes, please. So these little dot cards are kind of like the samples that you can use um, if you want to trial any of her colors. You can purchase these little samples on her site as well. There's a discount code in the description box for you that she has gifted to all of my subscribers um, or anyone who's watched the video. So that's down there if you want. So I decided I was going to use these beautiful colors because they look stunning. They're beautiful on black and on white. So I'm using some watercolor card and I am just getting stuck straight in. The colors pick up really beautifully. So obviously you don't have to have metallic paints. If you've only got some ra like random regular paints in your stash, just use those. Um, this is not about having to have these paints. I just wanted to share a bit about where these paints came from um, because they are quite unique and quite beautiful. Now, all I'm doing is making some blobs and it looks like a hot mess. Trust me, <laughs> I was sat there doing this going, what is this? What am I doing? Is it even worth recording? Now, I wanted to zoom in for you so you could see how stunning these paints are and how they kind of flow as you paint with them and all the glitter. I just love watching the magic of sort of like iridescent sparkle happen. So I was really enjoying doing this, even though it was looking like a super ugly hot mess. I was just having lots of fun putting this paint down, watching it kind of move around on my cardstock, and I had a movie playing. So this is the kind of card making you can do where you get to be crafty, creative, a bit artistic, but not really have to focus too hard. So literally I'm just doing my big shapes first. I did sort of biggest to smallest. They're not perfect. It's not meant to look perfect. It's meant to look artsy fartsy. So it's kind of meant to be a bit random. So you wanna start with your big shapes first and then we just fill in the gaps. So I'm gonna add some lines. I'm gonna add some dots. I'm gonna add some kind of mini lines. Just do whatever you feel like doing. I can't um, draw a straight line to save my life or a circle, so I didn't really go for perfection at all. I was just going for random blobs. But I feel like in the end, it kind of comes together. All the random ugly mess just kind of works. <laughs> so I'm really happy with how this turned out. And of course I had to do it on black as well because wow, <laughs> it's so, so pretty. And yeah, it's random and a bit ugly, but when you put all the random and ugly together, it kind of just seems to work and makes a really fun looking arty background. Now my pieces of card are quite big. I normally work on A6 for my card bases, but I used a piece of A5 card stock so I could trim it down and cut it to kind of what I want. And then it kind of adds that random feel. So I was trying to make sure that it didn't all end at the edge, that it kind of flowed off the edge of the paper. And so I went for a slightly bigger piece of paper so I could trim it down and make it into a nice card front. So obviously for my black card base um, or my black card topper, I made a card base for it in black as well. And then I just go ahead and I put a piece of white card stuck on the inside so I can write in it. Or I could go with this seam and I could use some metallic paint pens or metallic pens and that would go really well with that card as well. And all I'm doing now is just gluing on those little toppers that I created and sticking them onto a card base that matches the color in the background of that topper. So once I've got those on, then I can go ahead and finish off the fronts of my cards. I want to keep it fairly simple because I think the background's so much fun and is so energetic and lively that I don't kind of want to add too much more to that. So I've got my favorite ever stamps and die set. I'm sorry if you are sick of these, but they come in handy for everything. And the main purpose of my cards usually is happy birthday cards. Um, my kids go do a lot of birthdays. Uh, obviously we've got lots of family and friends that we send birthday cards to. So birthdays are my typical card, but obviously you could do whatever you want as a sentiment on your cards. 
Now my big trick with um, more intricate or detailed dies is to stick some sticky onto my foil card or my whatever card I'm working on. And then that way, when I die cut them out, they're already pre-adhesive and pre-sticky. Sorry, you had to see up my nose there for a second. I hate that about metallic foil card being like a crafter on YouTube. Oh, you can like catch some embarrassing little moments where you're like, oh wow, right up my nose. <laughs> anyway, so I die cut them out and then I can just peel them off. So all I used was some double-sized sticky tape. So if all you have is like really thin rolls, just layer them up, just line them on the back of your card and put down as many strips as you need to to make that back of that cardstock adhesive. And then that cuts down on having to need big adhesive sheets. You can just use up your smaller stuff. Now I wanted to pop these up off my cards. So they stood out a little bit more because I used the same colored cardstock uh, for the background of my words as I did my card bases. So I'm taking these scrapbook.com um, little thin strips and I'm going to apply them on the back. Now if you've got an intricate sort of die cut like this or you're doing shaker cards and you want to manipulate that foam tape a bit more, you can just take the release sheet off the back of it. So this is very sticky, it's sticky on both sides, but it allows you to kind of wiggle it and move it around the back of your die cut or on your shaker cards and it just gives you a bit more wiggle room. Now because I faffed with it with my fingers and I probably got oils all over it, I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue on there to make sure that it sticks and stays stuck. And then I just add my happy and my birthday and then I can go ahead and do that on the black as well. I felt like, yep, it's great, it's sparkly, it's pretty much there, and then I thought, no, I want to add on a little bit more, but obviously you don't want to take away from that background or add to that craziness. So I've got these clear little flat back plastic, um, they're not really gems, they kind of look like little water droplets, and they've got an iridescent shine to the top of them. So they're clear and they're see-through, so it will pull the color through that's already underneath. Um, and you just put down some glue, make sure it's liquid glue that will dry clear and then you can just pop those over top. So I apologize that footage was blurry so I cut it out but all I did was go ahead and add those gems onto my liquid glue and then it's gone and dried beautifully clear and you can just see those colors through it but it adds a little bit more interest to them. I hope you enjoyed today and enjoyed crafting with me. I am ahead of the game this time because holidays are coming up so I've actually got my next four videos filmed and ready and I'm really excited for you to join me in my crafty adventures. I've also got some haul videos coming up to share with you as well so make sure to click subscribe and follow with that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Now if you've been following me for the past few weeks you know that I've been working on a woodworking course and last Saturday was my last day at the woodworking course and I completed my bench and I feel really really proud of myself so I made this from scratch, I hand sawed all the bits, I sanded down the whole thing, put it all together and then I stained it with a nice beautiful grey coloured stain. And now it's, it's in my kitchen under my table. So I had this wonderful time with these wonderful women here in this picture um, and our awesome instructor and we just had such a great time together and we've managed to remain friends which is lovely and we're going to share our woodworking projects together with each other but I thought I would share that little bit about my kind of sideline extra fun. So take care, have a great week and I'll see you next weekend. Bye!